now we get to tackle our scaling problem. We'll say that now the application for a company has really taken off and is getting hammered by tons of traffic. Well, if that's the case, our single server isn't going to last very long. Sure, we could just take our single server and make it bigger, but that's still not going to last forever because they can only get so big. So how do we deal with it? Well, creating more servers is the right answer. We do this with what's called an EC2 auto-scaling group. The way these work is, well, we go about just as if we were making a single server, but we tell it to make multiple. That's really it in a nutshell. And if that sounds oversimplified, well, of course it is a little bit, but the thing is this, by using an auto-scaling group, making many servers is almost as simple as just making one. Now, the way you do this is by first creating what's called a launch configuration. This is basically a template for an EC2 instance. You then create an auto-scaling group and you give it the launch configuration. It'll then go and make instances from that template and manage them for us. So you can think of the launch configuration like a, like a blueprint. And if that's the case, then auto-scaling groups would be like the foreman that builds and manages the instances using the blueprint. So not too bad conceptually. Uh, on a quick side note, uh, I know they're called auto-scaling groups, but they don't auto-scale right out the gate. They're, they're capable of it, but we'll talk about that later. Now, that's great and all. By using an auto-scaling group, we'll be able to make the whole group of servers uh, so that they can host our application. But how does that even work? Well, from a data persistence standpoint, we don't have to worry. Sure, we may have three or four servers hosting our application, but they'd all be pointing back to that same RDS Aurora database. And so if you're on one of the servers and change your name and then go to a different one, well, since they're getting your name from the database, it'll be the same. However, now we have new problems. So if we have three servers, where do we point our users uh, to? That's going to be a confusing conversation. <laughs> if we have three different servers, well, they'll all have three different IP addresses. And now this is a mess from a user's standpoint. <laughs> And what about things like sessions? If your application uses session data to keep track of what a user is doing, well, that's going to be lost if they hop to a different server, assuming they can even figure that out. And finally, how do we balance the load? Well, I know for a fact that users aren't going to pay any attention to the metrics of your servers uh, and balance themselves. Well, this is where load balancers come into play. They do everything we just talked about and a lot more. But in essence, they accept incoming traffic and then distribute it to the servers that can best handle it. Now, this may sound like some magical piece of technology, but just like how we could set up a database on a server, like anything else, we can do the same with load balancers. You just create a server, so an EC2 instance, and then you'd use something like Nginx, HAProxy, or Apache. You tell those tools, whichever it is that you use, about the servers that you're trying to load balance traffic to. That being said, though nowhere near as labor intensive as database administration, AWS does provide us with some great load balancers. In EC2, there's a variety of them that all that do all of this for us automatically. And of course, they hook up with EC2 instances very easily. Uh, they also provide us with a lot of options and features that, quite frankly, would take a hefty bit of manual development if we wanted, if we wanted all those features developed on our own. Um, and since they integrate so seamlessly with EC2 instances, you know, we don't even have to worry about telling the AWS load balancers about new instances or about ones that are removed. It'll keep track of that for us. It'll also keep track of session data, perform health checks, return metrics, all sorts of things. And okay, with that done, we have really set ourselves up for success, like quite a bit. Uh, between an auto-scaling group, an RDS Aurora database, and a load balancer, you know, if this is your only application, you can take this very, very far. You know, I'd say a lot of the more basic applications out there, they could even stop here if they wanted to. But we're going to keep going further. When it comes to updating and patching these machines, deploying new versions of our applications, or deploying new services and apps that aren't this one, we can do better. And we can do it pretty painlessly using Docker and containers.